You know, we have a world which works in a particular way. And most of our Hindu family and the Indian public at large are relatively innocent in understanding how this world works. After the Pope issued that papal bull that any white Christian can go out there and just possess any land that wasn't occupied by Christians, and then the Spanish and the Portuguese started to wreak havoc in every corner of the world, and then the British came and started to steal from the Portuguese and the Spanish and develop their own particular version of that vision, that Christian expansionist vision. That was the dominant force, that was the blessed violence which just f flowed into every corner of the world. All of the ancient civilizations suffered as a result of it and out of that period emerged a world order, a way in which things are automatically assumed to be. This is the way it is. It's a very narcissistic, Eurocentric, Christian-centric view. And, you know, you have to compliment them for their dynamism, but you also have to make a note that they, you know, there is almost something uh, um, Tyrannosaurus-like in the enthusiasm with which they rush forward to consume anything that they can't understand. So the world order as it is, is actually a very uncivilized, well, semi-civilized, semi-barbaric way of looking at human existence. And this is the world order that we're engaging and interacting with. Of a significant part of that world order was the Roman Christian Empire, and the Roman Catholic Empire. And it's still a Roman Catholic Empire masquerading as a religious institution. And all Mother Teresa was, was a person who very successfully leveraged the compassionate capacity in most of the European um, world, in terms of the general public, she managed to milk it to her advantage whilst at the same time denigrating Bharat as being a, um, a civil, well, not a civilization, as being a, a, a nation of heathens desperately in need of enlightenment. And at the same time as doing that, she managed to collect a huge amount of money for the Vatican. Three in one, a an unholy trinity is what she embodied. You know, she successfully also managed to focus on increasing the suffering of brown people as they were dying. She was not there giving them succor, giving them support, giving them comfort, giving them healing. She was extending their period of suffering in the most demonic of ways. And this is the reality and the substance of what actually happened. I visited the Kolkata um, center of uh, Mother Teresa, uh, wanting to know these things firsthand, and I spent time there, and not a single penny that was raised globally for the benefit of those destitute souls was being expended on their well-being and their upkeep. So the reality is a little bit like um, <clears throat> the, the dichotomy between the reality of British values and British activities and the dichotomy between the PR of Mother Teresa and the reality of what she did are actually the same. There is a, a two-facedness there. And I think anybody who investigates Mother Teresa's real work, her alliances, her work with um, Papa Doc Duvalier and uh, the, the other tyrants around the world will come very quickly to a conclusion that she was far from um, angelic. She was certainly um, towards the uh, demonic end of that right. particular spectrum. The last thing I would just say about her and that whole issue, the institution, the charity itself, has made a public declaration saying that they were not shut down, that they had failed to provide the appropriate documentation and I believe that their foreign currency transactions are now back in action and so it really does lead us to scrutinize how the House of Lords chose to leap on this opportunity and to denigrate the Modi government, Hindus in general in fact I recall Lord Harry's making the ridiculous remark is it because the Modi nationalist government is frightened of Hindus encountering Christianity? Yeah. And I just look yeah. at the identity politics laden into that particular statement. One of these days I shall take him to task about that. <laughs> but this is the nature of what they were saying. And, right. you know, the other thought that struck me was that one of them, Lord Alton, also made a remark about the poor in India. The Mother Teresa's organizations was reaching these destitute Dalits and the poor in India. Where the Indian they, government cannot. Yeah. And how they would suffer. And the first thing that sprang to my mind was... Well, return that 46 trillion that you stole from Bharat 
And let's start from there. Let's go to all of these tax havens where these lords have their pennies and their ill-gotten colonialist gains um, hi hidden away. Let's empty those coffers and reach those poor people who are destitute because of past uh, British adventurism and past encounters with Christianity, if I can use the same identity politics that they use. And suddenly it would all change. But this is just another confirmation that um, what they speak, the posturing that they are so good at, the um, the manner in which they rub their hands, there's a, a piety there, there is a, an appeal to compassion there. It's so skillful and it's so deceitful. I think the days of that are actually numbered now. And hopefully um, the more um, thorough vetting of what these charities are up to in India, the sources of their income, the actual impact upon social cohesion, the fabric of the Bharatiya society, all of these things should be taken into account before allowing a single penny, cent or a right. dollar to enter Bharat. And I think we will see that. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.